Hey guys, what's up? My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent, and today we're gonna take a look at the Honda Recon 250. So the Honda Recon has seen virtually no changes in about the last five, six, or even seven years. In fact, if you were to look at the 2020 models and compare it against the 2019, the 2018, or even the 2017 model, you would really be hard pressed to be able to tell the difference. Really the only changes that you might be able to find are the brand of tires or brake pads or you know just little things like that. But in terms of the power plant and drivetrain and what you're getting overall, even the cosmetics, the body of the machine, it's going to look identical uh, for the last five years or so. Base model pricing on the 2020 uh, Honda Recon is $41.99. Now, keep in mind that if you buy this brand new from a uh, dealership, you're going to look at crate fees and some taxes and a bunch of other stuff that's going to probably rack up anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 in addition to whatever you're paying for the ATV. So if you can find a used 2019 or 2018 or even 2017 model, definitely go for that if it's been gently used. Additionally, you can often find last year's model, in this case a 2019 or even a 2018 model that is brand new, never been driven before, and the markdown on it could be anywhere from like 750 all the way up to maybe even $1,000 off the original price simply because they're trying to liquidate those models before the new year comes. So you might actually be able to find a brand new ATV like a 2018 or 2019 version of the Honda Recon that's identical to the 2020 version, but it's thousand dollars cheaper just because it's a year or two older. And quick side note, that's actually what I did. I bought a 2018 model because it's identical to the 2020 model. I got a 2018 model here in November of 2019 and I got it for $750 off the MSRP price and uh, I went with the electronic shift model. More on that here in a moment. Now the Honda Recon is on the smaller side when you look at adult quads. It's only about 40 inches wide. Now that's actually a feature to me because you can zigzag your way through trees in a woods and do some things that maybe some of those larger, you know, 600, 800 cc ATVs can't do. Now this is only 229 cc's. It's just enough power to, you know, get you up a hill, um, to get you through a creek and, you know, have some fun. Uh, it's not too small but it's not super large either and so you're only going to top out it you know depending on the terrain you're going to top out at maybe 45 to 50 miles an hour maybe 55 if you're going downhill but this is not uh, a vehicle that's designed for speed it is a utility quad a utility ATV and it's designed to be very versatile light and used in a wide variety of scenarios Okay, so enough of the specifications. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the bike and what it offers. So first of all, you are going to get independent suspension on the front. This is gonna allow you to get a little bit better ground clearance and it's gonna feel much smoother driving uh, and steering with independent suspension on the front. However, on the back, you are not going to have independent suspension. You're gonna have a solid axle and it's not a deal breaker for me. I still feel like it rides relatively smooth. However, some do complain that you're gonna get a little bit rougher of a ride from the back because it does not have independent suspension on the back. So obviously the Honda engineers had to make concessions in some areas simply to keep the price as low as possible. And I feel like this is one area where it really isn't a deal breaker. At least you have front, uh, you know, independent suspension compared to some of the older ATVs, which had solid front axles and were much uh, harder to ride and uh, did not have the same kind of ground clearance that you're going to get from this. Speaking of ground clearance, the ground clearance on this is actually pretty good for such a small ATV. I was able to take large, you know, six to even eight inch round logs without any sort of issues at all. As you're going to see here in the video, I was able to clear this log no problem. Sometimes I would detect a little bit of maybe scraping on the bottom, but it didn't have any issues clearing some pretty substantial obstacles. Ground clearance is listed as six inches, but you shouldn't have any problem clearing something a little bit beyond that. Now, this is not a four-wheel drive machine. It is rear wheel drive only. That being said, you shouldn't have any issues navigating through a little bit of snow, mud, sand, uh, you know, those those kinds of scenarios where you might want four-wheel drive. I found that with a good set of tires on the back, this is able to get through some pretty impressive terrain. Now this is a bare bones ATV, so you will not get 
a speedometer on this. You will not get a fuel gauge. You will have a light that will indicate when your fuel is running low, but you don't actually have a fuel gauge to know where you're at in the spectrum of how filled up your tank is. You do get a gear indicator, which is actually something that Honda has included um, only within the last, I would say maybe five or six years prior to that, the Honda Recon didn't even have a gear indicator. So it was a bare bones machine where you didn't really have any sort of instrumentation to tell you anything about the uh, vehicle itself. Now, obviously, now you do get the gear indicator, which is nice, but as I mentioned, noticeably missing is the fuel indicator and speedometer. You'll have three different ways of applying braking to the ATV. You'll have a foot lever, uh, which is very traditional, a foot lever which will control the rear brakes. You'll also have a right uh, hand lever that controls the rear brakes, and then a left hand lever that controls the front brakes. Now, in terms of lighting, you do have one rear light that acts as a brake uh, indicator. Uh, when you're braking, it will illuminate, and then it will also illuminate when you have your headlights on as well. Your headlights do have controls for both high and low beam, and then of course on and off. Another one of the compromises to keep this bike cheap is that it is a carbureted bike, not a fuel injected bike. So you do have choke controls on the ATV in order to uh, help you get it started. However, this is a Honda, and so here's a cold start for demonstration. <laughs> So not too bad at all for a cold start, and that was in 40 degree weather, uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit or four and a half degrees Celsius. So the biggest criticism of a carbureted uh, ATV is that it's gonna be, you know, hard to start in colder weather, that it's gonna be a little bit more temperamental, but honestly, we're talking about Honda reliability here, and I've had zero issues in terms of reliability in cold weather or cold starting. And uh, in fact, you know, a lot of people would argue that a carburetor is a better system for an ATV because it's much easier to work on a carburetor should you have any issues down the line compared to uh, a fuel injected system. Now, depending on where you're at, an option is getting the electronic shift. Now, I really like the electronic shift because it allows me to be able to control everything using my hands. I can put my feet up on the um, front of the vehicle if I'm going through some mud or water and still have controls of the transmission. Now, in the rare off chance that for some reason the electronic shift wasn't to work, or let's say your battery died while it was in gear and you're trying to pull start it because it does have a pull start option, there's this little tool underneath the seat and then that connects to this little bolt uh, that you'll see at the bottom of the ATV that allows you to rotate that bolt and shift through the gears in case you run into any sort of issues. Also on the side you'll you'll have uh, your fuel controls here. Uh, down is pointing to on meaning you're gonna get uh, you know fuel flowing through the uh, engine and then you'll also have here an off uh, this is obviously for when you're not using the vehicle and then you'll have a reserve option pointing straight up in case you were to run out of gas you do have a little bit of reserve to get you back home on the back of the vehicle you'll also have a little bit of a trunk space right where the rear tail light is at pretty good little trunk space for some bungee some duct bungee cords duct tape uh, gloves whatever you might have also under the seat I should mention that you do have your um, air Air filter box uh, and it's you know obviously it's about as high as they can possibly get it in case you're going through water and then you'll also have access to your battery and then you'll notice I put a battery tender on mine to keep the battery you know healthy during the winter now since this is meant to be more of a utilitarian practical uh, ATV they've chosen to go with a shaft driven uh, drivetrain instead of a chain driven system now the the main benefit of a shaft driven system is obviously it's a sealed system so you're going to have lower maintenance and running costs. It's going to operate a little bit cleaner, whereas a chain drive system is going to obviously have more maintenance on the chains uh, as they're um, exposed to the elements. And then obviously you've got the expense of the chain when it actually wears out and you have to replace it. Now the disadvantage of a shaft driven system um, on a vehicle like this is obviously that it's going to be a little bit heavier than a chain. It's going to bog the vehicle down just a little bit more. And so you're not going to have some of that torque that you might get if it was a chain driven system. 
But my guess is that if you're even considering uh, the Honda Recon, you care probably more about reliability and the utility of the vehicle than you do performance, and you're willing to let go of some of that performance in order to have a long-lasting, reliable, uh, practical vehicle. And in fact, that's what I love about the Honda Recon ATV. It is a vehicle that kind of has a little bit of everything. It's a lot of fun to ride around in the snow and on some trails, but then I've also used it, as you're seeing on screen now, for uh, hunting and for being able to um, navigate uh, longer distances without having to do all of that on foot. And so it's very utilitarian, and I just love the versatility of this ATV. And it's completely capable. I mean, I've had both my dad and I, and combined we probably weigh like 400 pounds plus, and it's had no issues getting through some really muddy fields uh, while we're hunting. And so I just love the fun factor. I love the practicality. I love the reliability of this vehicle. Um, I love how small it is so you can throw it on a trailer pretty easily. It, you don't have to um, invest a lot into an ATV ecosystem in order for this to be something that you're able to use and enjoy. So I am by no means an ATV expert. I'm just kind of giving you my opinion, my consumer review, if you will. Uh, feel free to ask any questions below and I'll be happy to answer them. Hey guys, thanks for watching. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. We'll catch you next time.